All right, what's good, guys? I just want to go ahead and give you guys a quick update on the Inferno Blow Ignite character that I've been playing. Uh, you know, you saw the video the other, a couple of days ago. I made some small tweaks, like, and I mean, like, small tweaks, but they are, uh, quite frankly, revolutionary in the context of the build. Um, you'll notice that my single target is looking a lot better as you see it, but of course, the clear speed is still uh, up there. Uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's still a melee character, right? But or you can see on the screen here the map clear is still phenomenal it's all i've been doing with this character really uh, it's so addicting just the explosions uh the the clearing strategy i'm using is a little weird if you're wondering what's going off by pathing here as i uh it's like right you open the deli mirror if you see one then you rush straight up to oak killing stuff on the way there to stack charges and then kill oak to get the plus one from the passive tree notable uh, and then once you've gotten to plus one, you come back down and clear until you hit five. It's a fast five strategy. Um, I got lucky and got an Omni on my way through five. Sometimes I push for six if I get five extremely early. And I mean like extremely early. This rogue X out here is bothering me while I'm trying to set up my expedition. Usually doesn't take me this long to set it up. Uh, but between the rogue X out bothering me, the loot that I was picking up, and the fact that, well, I got like set, there was just remove fire here. You know, as I started and then leave, and it's mostly so that everything is like spawned when I come back. Um, just so you know, it's more satisfying when I come through and blow everything up as opposed to blowing most things up because kind of just like harvest expedition will spawn the um, mobs with a little bit of a delay, if you will. You know, they'll be like, yeah, here's most of the mobs, and then the things you actually want to blow up aren't um, necessarily blow upable, if that makes sense. Um, and so that, that you know rest of the map i don't really do essences granted that was because i when i made my strategy i didn't have single target um with the fix to my single target i probably could be doing essences that i see i just skipped them because i haven't been invested in them uh generally speaking you see here we're rounding out the rest of the map because it's really just two loops right one outer loop one inner loop and then we hop over the wall and we come back over to our expedition look at all these mobs and Mmm, they're all gone. Oh, uh, that's the beauty, <laughs> right? That's definitely a large part now to do the Orgus end that I that I mentioned in the previous video. Now you can see some of the single target improvements. This is just right. These are just regular bosses. I didn't really want to push for Ubers. The damage is available for Ubers. I just am uninterested in figuring out how to get defenses in this character just due to like the constraints of some of the other stuff I was doing. Plus not really the focus. Like I didn't even switch to like an Ember Wake or unbound ailments for these bosses over cruelty. Like when you pick, like what is when I next hit the boss, take a look here, right? If the boss will ever let me hit him. I remember being a little irritated by this. Uh, you'll see here, my cruelty is not even maxed out. Like, I, I shouldn't be running Cruelty Support. I should be running Unbound Ailments. I should have an Ember Wake on instead of a, uh, a Death Rush. Like, we, we are tossing colossally in the ways to do a single target department. And yet it's still fine. I think in PLB, it's somewhere around 6.5 million on average. Uh, which is a bit flippant due to, you know, volatility support. But the damage still looks fine on Sirius. You can see, like, when he's, when he's allowed to whittle away instead of just teleporting away from my Ignite. He kind of just falls. Here's a Maven kill, which, okay, she first makes me do a really, really basic memory game. Like, look at look at this pattern, y'all. Now, imagine if I messed that up, though. Like, imagine if I messed that up, though, right? <laughs> uh, I'm not that bad. I'm not that bad, I promise. Um... But like it's, this maven phase gives you a really good idea of what my damage is like again regular maven no uber also the strike range is playing in huge Um, now see, here's the thing, right? Remember, my damage is actually pretty good. As you can see, she's like almost dead. I'm going to like go back in there and like one shot her like pretty much instantly here. Uh, but you know, my damage is good, uh, but brain damage is still a real thing. Right. And so now with that, let me go ahead and get you guys into learning about how the rest of the build works. Yo, what's good guys? It's your boy, no name. Let's get right into it. Right. 
covering today, got to talk about my Infernal Blow build from the other day, right? I got to show you guys that I made some updates to the character. It's actually functional. Uh, before you heard my voice for the first time, second time maybe, uh, you should have seen some footage from the upgraded version of the character, including some very nice fucking map clear, as well as some actual boss damage, right? Uh, the the characters actually come together now, and it was just a couple small tweaks between the that between my last video and now that I want to cover, but just to like get this out there while I work on an actual guide for this character to make it um cost efficient, because there's some things in here that I definitely spent on that are unnecessary for performance purposes. They just like I like spending money. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I spend like a rich person. <laughs> I like to spend money. So let's cover the biggest change in the build, which is I removed my multi strike gem. Um. So when I made this PLB before the league, I was using multi-strike almost in every iteration, mostly because I wanted the attack speed, and I thought, like, you know, faster attacks means I'll get to my six stack faster, and yada, yada, yada. But the whole league, if you've been watching my stream, or the whole time I've been playing this character, if you've been watching stream, you'll notice that my, like, bot, my like single target is a little questionable if I don't have things to pop on the target. Um, and that had me thinking, uh, actually, I think on my birthday, I was just playing offline with some friends, and I noticed... I was sitting there really staring at it like I'm not getting the infernal blow pop I'm supposed to be getting and so I went and looked it up on the wiki and of course I think my first time reading it through I actually just misread it literacy is an important skill you guys uh don't <laughs> don't be like me don't fulfill the, the stereotype that PLE players can't read uh show them that you can in fact read basic sentences such as mul as applying the debuff once per attack not once per hit, which makes multi-strike a completely useless gem for me. Even if the attack speed is really good, I need the debuff to actually stack in order to apply the bulk of my single target. And so we have to take multi-strike out, we replace it with a real damage gem. In this case, it's cruelty, which now this is not actually the best pick, I think. I'm pretty sure Unbound Ailments is better. I just didn't want to spend money on on getting white sockets for this chest. Uh, but I do think Unbound will be better, especially for bossing. Uh, and especially with Woke Unbound, but Cruelty works, and if I ever were to level to 96, I could get this Mastery here for Effect of Cruelty, and I think that, that would cap it on bosses. You pro Like, if you look closer at the footage of my kill boss kills, uh, or the boss footage I showed, like, you could see my Cruelty's at, like, 34%, I think it was. Um, like, it, it actually does exist, it's just I could get it higher with, like, the Effect of Cruelty node. Because the actual hits from the explosions are pretty big. But yeah, so anyways, we got up to 95. I still have a lot of ink because I stopped tattooing because I realized I didn't really want to waste more money on the character. Once I incidentally solved my single target by switching a single support gem, I kind of lost a lot of my motivation to spend more money on the character because the character was done at that point. Like, I literally, like, switched it out. was like, huh, my single target's fixed. Went, killed a couple bosses, and was like, yeah, unless I want to gear this up for Ubers, and I didn't really want to go for Ubers. Like, I, I don't, like... I don't find the process of gearing and preparing for Ubers to be super satisfying. And it's just because it builds towards an archetype of character I'm not super interested in. I'm not super interested in like multi layering of defensive layers. I'm much more interested in offensive mechanics than defensive mechanics outside of a couple niche cases. Like last league, I played Impending Doom for a long time. Uh, and like the, you know, playing with the whole Hella conversion, triple elemental blasts. Uh, lightning coil setup was actually really cool, but it's because it's the first time I've played like that in a while, and most of the I like the Ellie Flash, and like that's just a really cool touch on top. But I didn't really want to get too deep into all of that nonsense when maxing out this character when I could start preparing for my next idea or the next thing on the line. Actually, we'll talk about that towards later later in the video. But like, I wanted to put my attention towards the next thing in line rather than um, spending forever trying to make this uber viable. Uh, I granted, I know how I would do it. I just don't want to do it. Uh, but that said, let's talk about what I did. What, what, like, you know, what else I changed? You know, I added the death rush because I wanted more speed. Um, the passive tree is pretty much the same thing, right? We just, you know, we're looking good here. You can add more points or remove points as you like. Um, big thing I regret is not actually having this yet, just for like it. it I'm an R scaling build. I like it, right? Um, but overall, this character turned out to be an absolute fucking success. I'm very happy with it. Uh, I will have a guide out for this character that, like, function that, like, shows what it functioned at. Because this character was functional the entire time if I had just taken out the multi-strike gem. But I did get to spend some money on some cool things about, like, fixing defenses and whatnot. Like, this chest was a really cool craft. And I would make this chest again. 
I just probably would remove the step where I spent 10 divines trying to get the right pre the right failed prefix. Um, like that step was unnecessary as shit. I just really wanted percent life on my chest. Right. Um, but there's like a little unnecessary expenses like this, but all together, I think outside of the Aureus and the cost of this chest, I think this character was like within 15 to 20 divines. I'll price check it out when I make the guide. Um, the Sapples version I actually like a lot better than the Dawnbreaker. That's the other major change between this version and the last version is I'm no longer running Dawnbreaker for my Fizz conversion. I'm running this chest and eventually I was supposed to recraft my helmet. Decided I didn't feel like spending money on it. Um, but like I, I, you know, get some Fizz conversion, actually stack up a good amount of life and use Sapples to get max res and some spell block. And this was a very good way to solve one of my biggest problems, which was dying to Molten Shell Guilds because you are a melee build. Um, all together, I thought this was a very good way to do it. This flask is actually unnecessary, I realized, when I was checking out some stuff before making this video. Uh, I'm already sitting at 64%, so this is actually not doing all that much. But I'm not recrafting a flask. So, And it also, like, it's better when I take off the death rush for bossing. You see, uh, I, I, with the flask active, I'd go up to 76 chaos res, which is pretty good. In the case that I actually need chaos res for anything. Um... Other than that, though, the character's pretty much done. Uh, we'll talk about some things to focus on. So let's take away from this. If you want like a quick start, I'll have the PLB in the description so you can check it out. Or you can always just come by the stream and ask me some questions there about this character um, before the video's out. And then even when the video's out, you can still come ask me about it. Uh, but the big things to take away from how I built this character are Inverno Blow, good. Very good skill for this type of scaling setup. Uh, pops are even better. Legacy of Fury, Aureus End ignite prolif like incredible sequencing i would say um one of the things i would do in hindsight a little differently is i would consider pathing more down this left side here if i could like i would consider dropping these points right here and i have to do like when i make the guide i'll consider version of the tree to scale this at least if you play this league um and it's just so i can get some more strength nodes for tattoos because i want some more i want some explode tattoos i think with explode tattoos like about like five of them you could skip the oreo step like is it less chance to explode obviously but it's way cheaper like way way cheaper than putting on an oreo end, right and so that's kind of like the things i'm thinking through is like how do i make this character more approachable for a level a similar level of efficacy without you know again I don't want you to have to think that you need to spend 14 and a half div or more on the flask to really get the clear when you could definitely do it with a different source of pops. So we're going to look through things like that. The big thing um, of note, though, is, of course, play around story of the vault. This sword's pretty much the only way to play one handed ignite um, if you're playing with melee. Uh, if you play, you could also go two hander, but I didn't find a single two hander I could craft that did more damage than this within a reasonable budget. Um, and this allows me to use a shield. So it's pretty, pretty no brainer for me, honestly um there's like a version that i was thinking through that has like more left side pathing and some sort nodes that i have to think about but it does come at the cost of some of my aura scaling but that's like a whole other thing because i might not need the aura scaling that i ended up using which is one of the higher budget things in the setup is you know getting the jewels which these were only three div when i bought them but you know they could always be more expensive but you know got the jewels plus i have like an all this this was only like four div but like could be more expensive. Could have anointed charisma to go even harder on it, right? I have reservation efficiency on both my helm and my chest. Like we were really hard on aura based scaling for this character because that's just how I decided to get my attack speed. You could also get your attack speed through down here though. Like is this with this? Yeah. This wheel here, Blade Master, is attack speed and accuracy, and that could actually maybe solve a lot of the issues that I was having uh, with my accuracy, right? What's this masteries here? Sword masteries, which is strike range. The strike range here is something that I was really intrigued by. But there's also the frenzy charge chain when hitting unique hitting unique enemy if you want more raw damage on single target. But like again, just all things to think about. I'll probably have versions of the tree alongside of all of above. But for now, I think that's gonna wrap up this video, which is I'm gonna talk a little bit about what's coming up next. Well, yeah talk about what's up up next so first off like one if you didn't catch it earlier you should drop by the stream i'm usually doing something dumb uh you know working on builds or working on trade stuff or or whatever i've got a new project coming up in the works if you were on the stream recently you know you know and if you weren't i mean you'll find out soon when i announce it um but the next big things coming up are bpl is right around the corner sort was yesterday 
which means, you know, uh, preparing a build and thinking about what I'm going to do in the event. Then this weekend will be BPL. And then following that, I will probably take that character into trade and then proceed with my next build project. Um, and we will just be doing build projects or trade projects for pretty much the remain for until, you know, my attention span kind of wanes, which it could be a while. Actually, this league has been really fun for me to like experiment with builds and Atlas tree stuff with, especially because the tattoos just offer so much additional power to a character when you start playing around with them. Um, and so like, that's the big, sh the big of what's coming up. And then, you know, if you want to see all of that live, check me out on Twitch and I'll, I'll make sure I remember to post some of those adventures over here. Uh, but I don't have an actual editor yet, right? Like everything is still done by me. So there's no guarantee that you'll get to see any, like much of, if any, the great moments that ha the moments that do happen on stream. Uh, so you should definitely check out over there on Twitch. But you know, anyways, thank you for watching. Love y'all for supporting and check out the build. Uh, guide coming soon, sure, soon, surely. I don't know how I'm going to format the guide. That's really difficult for me to think about. Uh, but you know, I want you guys to be able to actually play this character because I found this character incredibly fun. It's one of the most fun characters I've actually played in the past couple of leagues. Um, the core of it is just really, really fucking good. Um, that's all I got to say there. Take care. Thank you for watching. Have a great one. Peace.